Hi, I'm Philippe St. Just. I'm a co-founder and head of product at Reef Technology. So before we begin talking about the bigger picture, why don't you introduce Reef? And if possible, give us a bit of context, why it exists, what needs or what trends is it catering to? At Reef, we transform underutilized urban real estate into what we call neighborhood hubs. Uh, neighborhood hubs allow us to work uh, with locally created producers of goods and services and bring those into the centers of neighborhoods. And what that means really is that we're, we're at the intersection of several macro trends that are happening in uh, the urban landscape. Uh, the first one is all-demand delivery, um, uh, where especially during COVID, people uh, accelerated the trend of being able to order things at home, uh, getting uh, food delivered, getting goods delivered to their, uh, to their home and office. The second one is last mile logistics and uh, all of the different forms that that, the, that that takes shape. So whether you're talking about personal mobility or the mobility of goods and services, uh, Reef is at the center of that. And then the last one is um, uh, this concept of the 15-minute city. Uh, and if you're not familiar with that, the 15-minute city is this idea that, um, that cities should be livable, cities should be walkable within a 15-minute radius from where you live and work. Reef basically uh, sits on those macro trends. And to go back to what I was mentioning before about the, the neighborhood hub, we essentially have a real estate platform that allows us to bring in goods and services in a way that they have really have not been uh, developed before to support uh, those macro trends. That's a, a very uh, succinct and to the point um, uh, answer. So that, that's, um, that's usually good, good way to explain a, a business model. So um, the good news for us in Canada is that Reef recently uh, decided to grow its footprint. Uh, I believe that by now you'll be working in over uh, 10 Canadian, or sorry, with over 10 culinary partners across the country. You'll be in Toronto, in Calgary, in Edmonton. So welcome or, you know, keep, keep growing here. We welcome your business. Um, why Canada for your investment? Yes, as you were saying, we work uh, from the West Coast to the East Coast. Um, across all of the major Canadian metropolitan areas. And really for us, Canada was a great intersection of good talent and a, an environment which was very conducive to this, uh, these trends that are at the core of Reef. So the, the urban renewal and how we were going to take cities into the, the uh, 21st century. Uh, additionally, uh, when uh, back in 2019, when, uh, when, when we uh, really became Reef, we acquired a, uh, a major uh, parking operator in Canada uh, that had itself operations from the, uh, uh, across the country. And so um, we are now the largest parking operator in North America, as well as the largest operator of what we call delivery-only kitchens in, uh, in North America and Canada. And, um, and so having the physical presence as well as the uh, operations and the people uh, really made us a, or made Canada a great place to do business. You probably know that in Canada, we love to compare ourselves to the United States uh, and to a lesser degree to Europe and, and other markets. Uh, each market is very unique, of course. Uh, that's my belief at least. But um, how would you characterize in a general sense, Canada's global competitiveness and uh, attractiveness to foreign investors? What are, let's say, our strengths and weaknesses in your view? First of all, we've had a great experience working in Canada, and uh, it's hard to generalize because every province has their own, uh, has their own approach and their own regulations. But overall, I would say we had a, a very positive relationship with both the, uh, the, the city governments, the provincial governments, as well as our customers uh, in those markets. And uh, we've been able to expand our business model throughout the, the, the country. And we're able to, we've been able to do that because of both the, the staff that we have and the, the people that we have working in Canada. Uh, we have about 1,500 employees uh, in the country. And uh, as well as our approach to, uh, to having deep relationships with the, uh, with the local governments. Canada is, is an interesting place where you have people that are interested in uh, innovation and that are interested in bringing in companies uh, that, that do want to bring, uh, sorry, that, that do work with a, with a view on the future, while at the same time uh, not, not compromising and having a strong sense of the core values that, uh, that uh, you know, drive the economy, drive the, uh, the, 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 the culture. 
And, uh, and so that ties back to this idea of the 15 minute city that I mentioned at the beginning, um, where, where we've, had great, we've had great partners, uh, thought partners as well as implementation partners in, um, in helping us uh, not only bring our thoughts on the 15 minute city, but also get, get feedback and uh, collaboratively uh, find regulatory paths uh, to, to, to bring about kind of this urban renewal and, and changes to the urban landscapes uh, to Canadian cities. I understand you have 1,500 employees in Canada, so it's a fairly, fairly significant workforce. Um, what has been your experience recruiting talent in Canada? Uh, again, are there services that you've leveraged? Um, and your general sense on, yeah, the, the talent pool and its development, basically. That's a great question. One of the things that's interesting about our company is uh, even though we're a tech company, we hire more than just engineers or, 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 or technical folks. As you know, our, our two main verticals are the parking industry as well as the, uh, as the restaurant industry. And so as a tech company, we've been able to bring on um, uh, parking leadership as well as uh, kitchen leadership from Canada uh, into, our, uh, into our ranks. And uh, I would say that finding talent has been, uh, I mean, it's something every company uh, deals with, but, uh, but we've been able to build a great team in, uh, in Canada, um, as well as continue uh, a lot of the, the work that the, uh, the, the, the parking company that we had acquired uh, previous, previously in 2019 uh, had, uh, had started. So overall, I would say the talent pool is, uh, is, is deep and we've been able to recruit well in, in Canada. And what about the innovation ecosystem? Uh, we like to think we're pretty innovative, but I think we also know some of our weaknesses. How do you assess it? Um, again, being a foreign investor, and so you know how, how competitive is this innovation ecosystem basically and how it collaborates with international companies? So one of our major development centers and offices is in Vancouver. And, uh, and we have a number of um, folks on our uh, technology team that work out of Vancouver and we've hired out of Vancouver as well. And, uh, and I think, uh, you know, um, uh, Vancouver obviously is in that, that west uh, corridor of technology innovation and we've been able to find good talent as well as partnerships uh, in, uh, in, in that area. But I would say that, uh, that innovation goes beyond just partnerships with tech companies. Um, it is, in our case, since a lot of our business is about reinventing cities, um, it's, uh, our relationship with the government is also a big, uh, a big part of that. And so innovation uh, also comes from understanding the, uh, uh, um, and having partners to kind of update the regulations, update the, uh, the, 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 the way things have been done previously, to open up the way for companies like ours to be able to do, uh, to do business uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Canada. You mentioned the 15-minute cities. Uh, how do you gauge Canadian cities through that lens? Actually, I think Canadian cities are, are extremely well adapted for, for that type of thinking. Um, because in, in general, um, Canadians have focused on quality of life. Uh, Canadians have focused on the values that they want to bring into the cities. And, um, uh, and so... Uh, there, there is a, a core that is already built up for the 15-minute city. What we are trying to do is help that core expand into uh, these modern macro trends of uh, last mile logistics and on-demand deliveries uh, and not have to compromise. So you don't have to do one versus the other. But rather, how do we allow people who live within these dense urban cores to be able to get food on demand, retail, de retail on demand, without clogging up the streets, without, uh, without hurting the quality of life that is, uh, that is in those cities. And, uh, and, and, and our model leverages a, an urban asset that people don't really think too much about, but that is the parking lot. So parking lots are a great place to be able to reutilize and use for different, uh, different use cases. Uh, and use almost as a staging platform, if you will, for that logistics, for that, uh, that micro-production, which will exist in the, uh, in, in the core of the neighborhoods themselves. Again, very interesting model and, and concept. Uh, and final question, um, if you actually had to pitch Canada to foreign investors, I mean, you, you're doing a pretty good job already, uh, <laughs> but you only had 30 seconds. What would you tell those foreign investors about Canada, given you, know, you only have 30 seconds? Yes, I mean, the, the two things I would highlight are the, uh, 
um, the, the quality of the talent in Canada and the ability to recruit people that have technical expertise as well as a, an understanding of the, of, of the world and the opportunities, um, as well as a regulatory environment which is willing to adapt, which is willing to, uh, to work with companies to, to basically bring them into the country and make them successful. Those are the two things that, that we've, we've noticed and we think others, others should too as well.